Good day ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe Andre Arcilia reporting about some issues in pragmatics. First point is that the pragmatic waste basket. Pragmatics is often called the waste basket of linguistics despite its negative con connotations. A waste basket is usually for things that we don't want any longer. This way of speaking acquired a certain status especially in the early years of pragmatics. How did this come about and how can it be reconciled with the view on pragmatics? The notion of waste basket goes back to the Israeli logician, philosopher, and linguist Yehoshua Bar Hillel in 1915 to 1975, who called semantics the waste basket of syntax in 1971. To see what he meant by this, we have to consider the ambitions of linguistics as a science in the late 50s and early 60s. With its em emphasis on formal reasoning and abstract symbolism, linguistic was ideally conceived as an algebra of language. The expression was first used following Lisbon's earlier notion of a conceptual calculus, in 1943 but has been borrowed by many usually when we try to apply formal mathematical methods to our daily life we realize that life is more than a mathematical abstraction the phenomena of real life cannot be exhaustive exhaustively accounted for by the the ideal idealizations that are typically of mathematical methods and which, strictly speaking, do not exist. For example, in mathematics, even such a simple thing as a line is not a line in reality, but only a well-defined concept to which the line I draw on the ground or on the paper is but a poor approximation. In the mid-50s, when Noam Chomsky developed his famous theory of generative transformational grammar, he was aware that much of what he said the grammar could do was valid only for a limited subset of language, with all the fringe cut off. In his earliest attempts, Chomsky made syntax into the main component of the grammar, completely divorced from the semantics, the meaning of the language, but postulated the, se the sentences could be described perfectly well on the syntactic level without ever having to mean anything, just like algebraic formulas which taken by themselves don't mean anything until we assign values to variables but still can be quite easily tested from correctness. Colorless green ideas live furiously. Consider Chomsky's notorious example in 1957. From a syntactic point of view, Chomsky points out this sentence is perfectly correct, however, it is strictly meaningless. Since the meaning of green, a color, is cancelled out by colorless, and so on. Since syntax has nothing to do with meaning, such considerations are strictly meaningless too, and should be left to the people dealing with meaning, the semantics in this way, semantics came to be called the waste basket of syntax. In the philosophy of the, of the 50s, people didn't think too much about their trash. It was not until several decades later than waste disposal got to be a major worry in the world at large. And as the world changed, so did human science. Many philosophers and linguists began to speculate about what went into the semantic waste basket and why. Chomsky himself came up with a suggestion from a disposal some years later. He explained the fact that certain sentences didn't make sense, even though they were perfectly good constructions, by saying that when combining words into sentences, you had to take certain precautions. Words should be picked according to their selection features, traits that guarantee their possible coexistence with other words and since, since the selection process was entirely governed by the syntax it could be formally explained by its quasi mathematical rules as long as semantics remained an abstract science whose main concern was the conditions under which a sentence could be true or false it was unable to explain certain phenomena that transcend or sometimes even voided those conditions and now, let us proceed to the next point, linguistics without borders. The British pragmatician Geoffrey Leach has compared the development of modern pragmatics to a process of colonization, by which some brave settlers tried to expand their horizons by venturing into hitherto uncharted, or so they thought 
territory. This colonization was only the last stage of wave-by-wave -wave expansion of linguistics from a narrow discipline dealing with the physical data of speech to a broad discipline taking in form, meaning, and context. The notion of colonization as invoked, as invoked here by Lich comprises two elements. There must have been some conflicts back home that forced the settlers into exile, just as the founding fathers left their native England because of its op oppressive religious policies. Furthermore, there are the natives, the people who were there originally and to whom in the historical parallel not much respect was paid. But where there were conflicts on the home front and in, yes, what were they like? One possible candidate is the opposition between a theoretical and a practical approach to the study of language. Between the theoretical and the applied linguist, as we have seen earlier, however, not everybody agrees as to the nature or the reality of this conflict. The eminent British linguist Surgeon Lyons goes to great lengths to argue that there was no real conflict between the abstract and practical. There is no conflict between the particularly abstract approach to the study of language with its characteristics of modern or structural linguistics and more practical approaches. Lyons does indicate the existence of certain practical and realistic tendencies which, however, are not opposed to real linguistics, except in the minds of people who, for whatever reason, insist on creating such an oppos opposition. However, abstract or formal modern linguistic theory might be and has been developed to account for the way people actually use language. Whatever the case may have been for Lyons in 1968, in hindsight, one wonders if there wasn't any conflict. Why did a number of people apparently and it is turned out later not without reason think there was? Another more internal conflict had its origin in the sectarism of the Chomsky School of Linguistics, whereby all the linguistic science, inclusive phonology and semantics, was supposed to fit in into the syntactic framework. So, that's it. Some issues in pragmatics is that the pragmatic was a waste basket and linguistics without borders. So, I think that you have understand what I have reported. So, if you have some questions, clarifications, you can comment our comment section. Thank you and God bless.